news this evening and so may request everyone to open our Bibles please in, ch in the chapter, the first chapter of Ephesians and we're still on this grand theme of this book which is a picture of Christ's church. Amugin ni ang tema, ang topiko ni Apostle Pablo when he wrote this, this letter to the Ephesian believers. And for these past Sundays now, mga utod, we have been discussing the blessings that God gave to all His children. Tanan nga mga anak sang Dios, tanan nga nakabaton kay Jesus as their Savior, have been blessed with these eight spiritual blessings. And as I review, I'll give us the six blessings that we discussed na these past Sundays. The first that we said is found in verse number four. Verse number four says, According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. The first blessing is, being a Christian, you can know that God chose us in him. And this, as what we've said, is the doctrine of election. Before time began, he, God, already chose or handpicked us for himself. Nobody else handpicked us. It's not based on our own capacities or our own talents or our own abilities. There is nothing that we deserved to be handpicked by God. But God, before, before time began, already chose us. That's the first blessing. The second blessing is found in verses 5 to 6. It says, Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. The second blessing is he predestinated us. Having predestinated us. And this word predestinated, we said, appears six times in the Bible. And we said that the definition of this is it means to mark out the boundaries or limits beforehand to define, to appoint or determine beforehand. Gin, gin appoint na daan sang ginoo. Ano ang gin appoint sang ginoo? Look at your, your, your Bibles. Verse number five, adoption of children. We have been adopted into the family of God. Kabalutas ang unang aton amay. The word of God tells us is who? Satan, the devil. The word of God tells us if you're not in Christ, you are of the devil. Your father, the devil, the father of lies. But when you trusted Christ as your savior, naglain na ang imong family membership. You don't belong to the devil anymore. You belong to the family of God already. The third blessing is he made us accepted in the beloved. Verses 6 and 7. Humble wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved in whom we have redemption through his blood. Accepted there is the word grace. We have been accepted by God. Wala gid kita mga utod sang may pabugal nga makambal ta bugit accept gid ko sang Ginoo kay grabe gid ko nga tawo maalam gid ko takop da mo gid ko arta ko no. There is nothing in us that will make us accepted in the beloved. But by virtue of the blood of Christ, says verse 7, we have been forgiven and we have been accepted by God. Beautiful truth. The fourth blessing is here found in verse number 8, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Sa tanging Kristuhanon kita, God made two things to abound, actually super abound. Ginda mo da mo na ginhatag gasulo bragan alawas ano ni kaduwa kabutang ang ginhatag sa aton first is wisdom Sophia and the second is prudence Sophia is moral intelligence spiritual insight into the real character of things this is the theology of things now we know ano kalimbu si ano sa makasasala sin salvation death and life God imparted to us in that through the power of the Holy Spirit and through the wisdom of the Word of God. And then, prudence is understanding. You have a particular um, ability to apply the wisdom you have. Kung mga uto, hindi tani makuha yes, sa university training. We cannot have this if you have a master's degree. This is not taken if you have a PhD degree. This is only given for Christians. To Christians. 
Then the fifth blessing is found in verses 9 to 10. Having made unto us the mystery of His will. May sang una galik mga butang na hindi tama intindihan, hindi tama hangpan. But when we became a Christian, when we became a member of the family of God, this mystery is revealed to us. Gindefined tama ng mystery nga, 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 nga word. It means a truth which cannot be discovered except by revelation. And that revelation is the Bible. What is this mystery? Nga sang una, salvation is only given to the Jews, but now, by the virtue of the grace of Christ, salvation is also given to Gentiles. Kita na. And now we have a new group of people. Sa una, Gentiles lang and Jews. Subong, we already have a different entity. We have a different special people. Sin uni? The church. The church. Kita ni. Kita nagbaton kay Jesus as our Savior. And the purpose here is this. In verse number 10, it says, if you go back to Ephesians chapter 1, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, He might gather together in one all things in Christ. Nga agin reveal sa ginoong hindi mystery, He wants us to know that our future is secure. He wants us to understand nga mas kina ano ka budlay sang kabuhi subong someday dearly beloved someday Christ will let us see that he truly is reigning he's truly in his throne he's truly in control he will gather everything for his glory and then last time's sermon was about the sixth blessing and the sixth blessing is found in verse 11 in whom, in Christ, also we have obtained an inheritance. So that's the sixth blessing. He made us his inheritance or private possession. And we said, because of the, of the tense of the verb, the kind of verb we have here, this could mean two things. It's either we were chosen as God's portion or private possession given to Christ, or in other words, ginimigalo kita sang amay kay Jesus. Because Jesus died for our sins, Jesus gave His life a ransom for many, ang resulta sina, ang mga nagkalaluwas, ginhatag sang amay like a gift to Christ. But the second possible meaning is this, that Christ is given to us as an inheritance. Because we are saved now, now Christ becomes our own. That's why we have a song such as, Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. And we discussed also, what, what, what did we inherit in Christ? We discussed four things there. The person, Christ himself. We have Christ himself in our lives. The power also of Christ is in us through the Holy Spirit. The promises of Christ in the Bible are endless and every promise we can claim that and then the last is the place and we know what that place is it's heaven John chapter 14 I will go and prepare a place for you so these are the six blessings that we have already discussed now I want to finish Tani, blessing number 7 and blessing number 8 to, to finish up the 8 blessings pero though ang number seven nga blessing. And we go to Ephesians chapter 1, 11, and 12. You please open your Bibles there with me. And dearly beloved, as we study the Word, do not close your Bibles. I want you to reference in the verses that we are going to study. We are studying the Word. Okay, so we are now in Ephesians chapter 1, 11 to 12. Please follow with your eyes as I read this to you. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his will, of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Lord, we are so privileged again to gather as your children, to open your word freely, and to learn from you. 
Lord, may this not be only a textbook experience where we know cognitively ang mga facts, ang mga words, ang theology sini, ang pagpangamuyo gidnakon ginoo. Beyond that, may you encourage us to apply the things we learn in our lives so that we will truly reach Christ-likeness, maturity, that you would change us and mold us. Nga hindi lang kami ginoo mga kristuhanon nga wala gid nagatubo. So, buligi kami, Lord, as we feast on your powerful word. Feed us, Father. Feed your lambs. Feed your sheep. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So, we have now, mga utod, the next um, blessing here. Blessing number seven. And blessing number seven is this. We have been predestinated. In short, ten ko lang nakikalaba agit actually sa complete nga sentence. We have been predestinated according, to complete this, to the purpose of Him who worketh all things after the counsel of His own will. This is the, 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 the next blessing to a Christian that we want to emphasize tonight. Now, we already have defined predestinated from verse number 5. But let me reiterate what it is. The word predestinated means to limit in advance. To limit in advance. Kag verse number 5 tell us, gin limit na nga daan ang predestinated nga word even before the foundation of the world. So this is the same exact word that we find in verse number 5. And contrasta. Ano ang verse number 5 kag ano ang verse number 11? Verse number 5, as it used the word predestinated, was aiming to tell us that we were predestinated to be adopted as children of God. So verse number 11 na mga gimbasa tabag ulang, ini nga word na predestinated naman does, did, was not used for the adoption. But it was used to tell us that we were predestinated for a purpose. Okay, did you get the difference? Verse number 5 is about the adoption. We were adopted. But now, verse number 11 tells us that there is a purpose predestinated already for us. And let me define the word purpose here that's mentioned in verse number 11. Purpose here means a setting forth or a proposal of intention. Amuni ang word nga purpose. So, here is, the, here is the complete picture now of what blessing number seven is. We are predestinated before time began, before the foundation of the world, that we should know our purpose. We should know our intention. We should set forth what we ought to be doing for the rest of our lives. You know what, damo mga tao subong, nagpanglakaton lang sa kabuhi, nagkabuhi kada adlaw, pero wala kabalo kung ano ginangimuon na sila kabuhi. Sige lang, tulog kung gabi, bugdaw naman sa aga, kapoy naman bilog ng adlaw, eskwila, obra, balik naman, tulog naman, balik-balik. But if you ask them, ano kitang purpose mo sa kabuhi mo? Why do you do what you do? Sa Bisaya na, anong imong tumung? What's your purpose? A few years back, you remember, there was a book ang ginagawa. The Purpose Driven Life. Pagdamo sinyo siguro, kabasa sina. Kaya hindi lang na isa ka book nga amun na nagwa nga amun ng title, mga utod. Kadamo pagit sa mga books nga nagapaalintun nga wala agimang kita kabaluk anong purpose ta. Kung magkato ka sa, actually sa Philippine Christian Bookstore, kag sa ibang nga mga bookstore, kadamo git sa mga books sa section nga na ano git bala ang purpose ta. Isn't it amazing to you? Or maybe kani interesting nga pila ka billion nga mga tao the same question. What is my purpose? 
kag kisa masubo kay kun wala ka kabalo sang imo nga purpose kakapoy sang kabuhi because you just go through the habit, you just go through the sequence of your life, you just go through the days, but you're not really aiming for something. You're not really hitting the mark. Is there a mark? What is there to hit? Di ba kutumong iban sa game mga mga sawa, mamana, after mamana, mabata, after mabata, maubra, pagid more, para ang bata, mapadako, mapayeskwila, hasta na nasa uli, magtigulang, magwitar, magwitar, maano, maggolf, magawlagaw, maano, di after sila maglagawlagaw, maggolf, magtravel, ano na dayon? Ati pastor, ti, mapungko-pungko na lang yun, hindi nakagagaw mo, shut in ako eh, di na lang kubutang sa shut in listahan sa atong prayer list. As if life is just something that you need to go through and you don't know where you're going, you don't know your purpose. But here, mga utod, hamba sang, sang aton nga, nga, nga verse dere. The blessing of Christ to us is the moment that we became a Christian, we know that even before time began, we have been predestinated according to the purpose. There is really one purpose. There is only, there is really one intention and and, and 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 the most important word here as far as what it is then is the word him predestinated according to the purpose of him sino na ding him of course this is god this is god it's the lord we have been predestinated according to the purpose of God. And this God, this God we have in verse 11 is described as the one who worketh all things after the counsel of His own will. The Lord has a purpose. And it's the, the purpose is based on his, the counsel of His own will. And hambaldiri, ang Greek word there, that's the verb there here is worketh. He worketh. And I think you remember the word we discussed last time. This word worketh is the Greek word energeo. Aha! Rings a bell. This Greek word is the same as our English word what? Energy. Energizer. Do you know battery? No, gusto ba linton si nga advertisement? Na kung gamiton mo na ako ng mga batang, masigisigi na na sa iya plakpak na. Ang bilo mo na, masigisigi na na iya alsta. Pero of course, masigisigi na ni Jaiser, gauntat man. Na kung to sa balay ni Jaiser man, itong akon sa wall clock, kung ito naguntat man sa. Okay? So that word energy came from this Greek word. But the point of the word is this. Energeo means that God has the ability, has the energy to work out His own plan. This tells me that whatever God plans, He accomplishes. Kita yakis ayag ka plano, tapro do hindi matabo tabo no plano no. Ang bagay namo sa ako mga ut mga kabianan pa yah, bokis ama yun ni bilang wala plano kaya gadayun pa. Merkada ako di sa church for example lapla ag na kami pasoy yam yam masin ka batuan, okay? Nini Mira is with JCF, sinang Carla also with JCF lapla lapla ag na kami tanan. Tipoy, in the US, laplaag kami. Kisa plan, why gabi? Kapag ito, 20, amuni, mamayunyun ta. Amuni, mapuli ka mo, di, mapaburaka ita. Wala, agit ka na tayo, tayo ng plano. Kung diin pa nga wala plano, kung kisa, ay ari di si amuni, ay ari di si amuni, ay ari di, at di magwata, nadayun pa. Amuna kong kisa. One time, actually, wala agito na mong ganyan plano. Di kayo, ay man, talaga plano, nga mapatay ang atong abiyan. But when Dinah died, one of our kabarkada, kaya kung natipon man kami, sa kasakaw naman, hindi kami matipon-tipon mo. May absent, hindi permi, may absent ka, hindi gipig ka mo ni, hindi last minute, hindi ka matuti. Layin ka niya kung kulang. Layin ka niya kung may wala atang isa, kaya hindi na yung mechanics ng grupo nyo. Layin ka niya, wain na yung ang joker, wain na yung ang seryoso. Layin ka niya, kung kulang ang barkada, wala kung may barkada ka, mapatsagan mo gina. Pero pag taliwan niya sa amon nga good friend ng Dina, ito, oh, tipon, may gamitan na niya. Wala sa hindi-hindi. Kanto kami sa dits. Hmm, Inabot tayo sa isa. Kompleto! Wala plano! 
Amo kita na is our kaplan. No man pwede ka But that is not who our God is. When God makes the plans, when God laid out everything even before time began, listen, He has the energy, He has the energy, He has the ability that whatever He plans, He will accomplish. That's what Psalm 138 verse 8 tells us. The Lord will fulfill His purpose. Kaganami ina nga verse, kay may sugpun. Purpose for who? For me. You know what, dearly beloved? God has a purpose for you. You shouldn't go on with your life as if there's no purpose. Kakaapoy ina nga kabuhi. Sige ka gasto, sige ka upo ka, gasto mo naman. Diin, diin pa dulong ini. But we understand, God has a purpose. He laid down His plan and He will do whatever He wants to do because He has the ability to do it. Amo man nahambas ang Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 tell us these words, being confident of this very thing. What are we confident of this very thing? That He, God, which hath begun a good work in you, will perform it. Until the day of Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, that's our God. He did not save you for nothing. If you're a Christian tonight and you feel like ang imunga life ula direction, you're missing the point. That is sad. You live living a defeated life because our God here is telling us is that a God nga wai plano sa imo kabuhi anong ginoo ginluwas siya tapos at sige bahala ka na da kuno gimuon mo at sige ti ako anong gusto mo no when God saved you he already knew beforehand what your life should accomplish of course, lain lain ang ato nga walks of life. As I look at you tonight, we are from different professions. You're from different family backgrounds. Maybe you're from a different ethnicity. Maybe you're from different municipality. Maybe you're from a different um, educational background. Lain lain kita. But in Christ, we are one. And He has one purpose. Diba si Kamang ko kanada? Okay, pastor, ti ano nang purpose? Ah! Well, I'm glad you asked. Because verse number 12 tells us the purpose. Look at your Bibles, please. Let me read verse 11 again to, to, so that we could have a continuity here. Being predestinated according to the purpose of Him who worketh all things after the counsel of His own will, that, that what? That we should be to the praise of His glory. Do you get that? I'll read it to you again. That we should be to the praise of His glory. In short, mga autod, here is the limit. Here is the predestination. Here is already the, the, the some, something that God predestinated even before time began. He predestinated us that each one of you, each one of us Christians, should be to the praise of His glory. Ngang kabuhi ngani, ngang kabuhi natun, kabuhi ninyo, maghatag pagdayaw sa Dios. That's the purpose. That's what God already limited in your life. Ngang ini nga kabuhin ginluwasan ginoo will only have one purpose, to glorify the Lord. That's God's work or plan for all of us Christians. He was just already predestinated by God before the foundation of the world. That's the part of God. Pero may sugpon ang verse number 12. Look at your Bibles that we should be to the praise of His glory, the next words, who first trusted in Christ. Of course, before we saved, we really don't know. When we got saved now, we know. But the question is, ano ang part natin diri? God predestinated, God already set it forth, but our part is this. 
who first trusted in Christ. We trusted Christ. The word trusted there actually is, is, is to mean hope. We hoped in Christ. How did we hope in Christ? When did this happen? Verse number 13. Look at your Bibles. In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Sa parts ang ginoo, yes, he predestinated. He already set forth the plans and he's doing that. He is already energeo. He's counsel of his own will. Sa ato nga part, nagsugod na. When we came to a realization, God, I know I'm a sinner. I could not save myself. Thank you for Jesus who died for me on the cross. I trust him now as my Savior. That's when we heard the truth. When the gospel was preached to us and then we believed. Can you remember that time in your life? Romans tells us clearly how this process happens. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. For I am not ashamed, says Paul, of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. You see? And another verse tells us that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When, when somebody shared to you the gospel, you see, you will not be saved by any other means. You need to hear the gospel. That's why we are commanded to what? Make disciples of all nations. Go ye therefore and teach. Okay, taya ki luwas na ta ang iba. Hindi pa. Amun na gina kumahal kita sang ginoo. Dira tanan gasugod ang aton nga bahin. Look at Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Romans 10, 17 tells us, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, verse 18, Have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. That's what we want to do. Because it starts there. When we hear the, the truth, the gospel. In other words, dearly beloved, let me summarize everything here. Only those who are in Christ, who have trusted Christ as Savior, can truly live for the glory of God. Did you get that? Kung palis ka dun natin, that means, ang mga hindi kristuhanon, ang wala pakabaton kay Jesus as their Savior, they can never really live for the glory of God. They can talk about it. Kada mo sa mga kisuwa, hindi kisuwa, no, no? Mga unbelievers, they talk like us already. Have you realized that? I talk to my friends sometimes. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. Like, whoa! They use our terms already. Wow, well, praise the Lord. You know, amazing. Ito ang grace ang ginoo. Wow! When they talk, they, it seems like they're saved. Ang krulbaan pa, they also sing our songs naman. They sing Amazing Grace now. They sing, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Even, even the Roman Catholic Church, they sing those songs now. Sometimes we don't know mabutang ang linya kung sino nang luwas kung hindi. But you know, di we get mabalik. That's why one time when I was riding a, a taxi, I talked to, <coughs> excuse me, I talked to the taxi driver. <coughs> I usually do that when I'm alone. I talk to the taxi driver. I talk about whatever, about the city, about our new mayor, everything. And then I usually go into the gospel. Usually, ginagamit ko na ang ilang mga ginapakabit nga ang mga grocery, sa ilang nga mirror, as a jumping board for conversations. Kasi kung wala man niya, ginambal ko man, ay wala ka di yamanong sa rosary, no? Di ba, ka, di, okay ka lang yan, why ka rosary? And then I realized, this taxi driver, nga akong, nga, nga, the driver sa lakyan, 
He goes to a church in Haro. Kag Christian siya ko no. Amo nang iya nga ginhambal, Christian. So of course, ang amo ni hambal subong idilinita gitik paano ka manong makambal nga Christian ka? At di bugay gitsan Ginoo na iya paagi sa kay Kristo. Kag dapat di pang ikasugan mo gid. Mayong buhat ka na. Ah, oh, oh, okay. So, duwa ang ginambal ni Manong Driver. Bugay sang ginoo, sounds like Christian, right? Paagi kay Jesus. Wow, Christian gini? Paagi kay Jesus? Magpakamatay siya mo, nag-aala just ang kabuhi sa cross. Wow! John 3, 16, how? Blano, dali may sugbon. Kati pag ikasugan taman. Tikit ang nantagit na. Manong, manong. Tayuhon, tamanong. So, paano gimaluwas ang tao? Di amun na gani, ang balkong uh, pagi kay Jesus. Kag, oh, so, dapat, saligan mo si Jesus, kag dapat maayong buhat pagid. Eh, ito, ito, amun man. Ay, manong. Di ra kagid sumala. Tinag-quote ko sa verse Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Di oo, di amun man. Di amun man. Di amun man. Ang bali manong driver. By grace through faith, give me. Di pariyos naman ta. Manong, hindi tayo pariyos. Kaya imuya, by grace through faith plus good works, imuya. May makilawig man ang akong nga biyahe. Pamanduryaw ko mo. Eh, eh, di, di, ah, di, di, man ginaya, uh, may yung buhat, ah, di. Manong, bala, ang bala mo kikagina, ah. So sometimes, there's, there's, you see? But here, it tells us. Here it tells us that only those who have trusted Christ by grace through faith has this blessing to produce the good works. I hope you see the point. You don't need the good works to be saved, but because you are saved, we are His workmanship. Now we can produce the good works because even the Bible tells us all our righteousnesses. Ang isa ka tao nga wala Kristo, wai ka batong kay Jesus your your savior, our righteousnesses tanan nga mga ginahimo tanga mayong buhat are like what? Filthy rags. The best good works you can do? How many years you do it? How often you do it? You know what is that for God? Filthy Ranks. You see, we don't have our own capacity. We, we cannot do good works to please Christ. There's nothing in us that will please Christ. That's why the Bible tells us that we should trust in Christ first. Remember some verse 12. And how does that happen again? When you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So to end mga utod, as Christians, we are created for God's glory. That's our purpose. That's your purpose. That's my purpose. So that every day of our lives, as you wake up, we need to remind ourselves of that. Because atun pa, amun ang overarching mong hashtag sa imo kaugalingon. Amun ang imong purpose. That is the basis of why you do things or why you don't do things. That's the basis why you work the work you do. That's the basis on how you relate to other people. That's the basis on why you have that girlfriend. You have that boyfriend. That's the basis why you come to church. That's the basis of your life. It's not just you working. It's God who works in you. He already predestinated this for us. Isn't that a wonderful truth na ang burden wala sa aton? But even the good works we do, we are dependent on God. 
China. China may work out sa atun. So that as we end this evening, let's go to Galatians 5. Galatians 5. Let's start on verse 19. I want us to see here the contrast. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I want us to read this because this is the things we're not supposed to be doing. Because this list do not glorify God. But somehow, sa atun kabuhiya, amu pa ni yung ginahimu na atun. Somehow, sa atun kabuhi, amu ni kita well known for. Listen, we're not predestinated to do this. We're not predestinated, predestinated to, to gossip. We're not predestinated to hate each other. We're not predestinated to be depressed. We're not predestinated to do all of these things that God has not predestinated us to do. You know what God predestinated us to do? The contrast is in verse number 22 and 23. But, I like that word, three letters, but it just twists everything up. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, according to how we are predestinated, let us also walk in the Spirit. Says Paul. Mga utod, amuni ang atun predestination for the glory of Christ. So daily, we need to assess. Diin ka nga lista sa first list or sa second list? Daily, you need to ask yourself, why am I living? Who am I living for? What is my life about? Because again, if you go back to the passage that we have just read, the seventh blessing, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation I'm talking to each heart this evening. Maybe you're a teenager, you're a single person, you're married, you're an, you're an adult. Remind yourself, this is the blessing. You are predestinated to give glory to God. Now look at your life. Look at your life. Are you aiming for that? Are you there? Or ba sila talang ka na? Ba sila layo ka na? Ba sila lipat ka na? Nalulung ka na sa mga butang na dapat hindi. Check our hearts. Check our lives. That's your destiny. And I believe sometimes life becomes hard 
life becomes impossible. Life becomes hopeless. Why? We don't live according to how we're supposed to be living. Amuna, nga daw la purpose. Amuna ako no kakapoy. Amuna nga wala kalipay. Amuna ako nga agad talang talang. Wala purpose. But tonight, if you have Christ, you know why you're here. You know why you live. But also tonight, Ayhan, it's your first time to come to Dome Baptist Church. Maybe you have been coming over and over and over again. And yet, Ari, amun ni makita mga do wala ko purpose, manu ni man. Basi kinang lan mo ni maluwas. Maybe you haven't trusted Christ as your Savior yet. Maybe you actually know it, but you haven't actually acted on the knowledge you have. You haven't placed your trust in Christ. You have heard the gospel over and over again. Diriman sa Dome Baptist Church, nawalihan ka na, puno na kayo dulunggan mo. Pero basta ikaw yan, kabalo ka gid, hindi ka paluwas. You don't even know where you're going when you die. That's sad because maski na ano mo kasimba dali sa Dome Baptist Church, kompleto mo attendance, kagrabe kid ang imo paghatag sa offering mo, dako gid kada Domingo, hindi na makaluwas. That's why life seems to be just like what you live right now. Purposeless. You need to come to Christ and you need to tell Him, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I could not save myself and there's, there's, there's penalty for my sin. But thank you, Christ, for paying for my sin on the cross. I trust you as my Savior. Lord Jesus, save me. If you do that, this is going to be your purpose. I pray tonight that both groups, you will know now what to do. Christians, I challenge you, live for your purpose. For those who are not yet saved, trust Him now or it will be too late. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for giving us this seventh blessing as a Christian. Kasi at fourth mo na ginuotanan kung paano namo ni kabuhi ang amon kabuhi para hindi kami magtalang-talang, hindi kami magkabuhi ng dawla kami sa purpose. I pray, Father, that it's through this message, damo gid mahangkat sa amon ng mga kautu kandri sa John Baptist Church. Kagayahan ginoo may agad rin isaw, duwa, or tatlo nga nagkadto nga amon kaabiyanan nga wala pa si Guru kilala kay Jesus as their Savior. Please use this simple, short invitation that they may also make their decision tonight. Let's continue to bow our heads. Please and close our eyes. Ayan, subong, I'm talking to one or two or three. Bisita ka, ayhan, abiyan. Or you have been going to dawn many times. But life seems to be going nowhere for you. You tried many things. You tried going to church. You're always here. You tried giving offerings. You tried singing all these songs. You tried to listen intently. Pero wala. Ano ang kulang? Basi wala ka Jesus sa imong life. You know everything. But as taklanda, you just know. Like a personal relationship with Jesus. You need to be saved. Why don't you come to Christ tonight and tell Him, Lord, I'm a sinner. I know that. And there's penalty for my sins. But thank you, God, Jesus. He paid for my sins on the cross of Calvary. And I trust Him now as my Savior. Jesus, please save me. Is there anyone sa mga gabi nga maghambal sina? Is there anyone sa mga gabi nga magdesisyon sina nga desisyon to put your trust in Christ? Do you please raise your hand. The raising of hand is not to save you, but I want to know if there's anybody here. I just want to know. And maybe I could talk to you after the service or someone from our staff could talk to you. Just let that hand quietly, Pastor, my hand. Here it is, a symbol. But in my heart tonight, with all sincerity, I trust Christ as my Savior. I want to be saved. Please raise that hand. Anybody, I see your hand. God bless you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. 
Pastor, I'm raising my hand quietly because I need Christ. I want to be saved. I want to know Christ as my Savior. Anyone else? Please raise your hand. This might be your time. This is your time of salvation. Please raise your hand. If I see it, you can put it down. Anyone else aside from that one who raised her hand? Please raise your hand. Anyone else? Father, we thank you that there is a solution to our sin problem, and that is Christ. We thank you also that there's a solution to a purposeless life, and still that is Christ. We are going to be so lost without you, oh Jesus. So thank you for your word. Salamat sa pabanghikot mo sa isa namon kaabyan nga nagpalinton sa iyang nga pagsalig sa imo as Savior. I pray that you will bless her. Help her to be mature and to truly live a life that is purposeful in Christ. For all of us Christians, Lord, help us to synthesize these truths and apply this in our daily lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.